In this video, I'm going to show you how to build CNC plasma cutter. Uh, this is HBOT kinematic system. Oh, uh, never mind. I switched to Corexy because Corexy is a lot sturdier and better than HBOT. Uh, oh, oh, and I made a third version with um, square tubing to make everything easier to assemble. There is only one type of tube. And on the edges of the frame there are those mounting points that can be either 3D printed or cut out of some metal plate in case 3D printed parts are too weak. Okay, let's start building. So those are some of the materials that I'm going to be using. Uh, the brown thing is a template for drilling. There are some linear rails, some limit switches, pulleys and shielded cables and obviously six meters of square aluminum tubing which i'm gonna cut on this rotary saw when that was done i sanded down the cut edges and positioned everything on the table making sure that all of the dimensions including the diagonal ones are correct this ensures that all of the tubes are parallel so right now the only thing keeping this together are those four clamps at the edges um, I could screw it together with like some bolts, but I chose to weld it. Uh, so I first started by making some spot welds on the on each side to evenly heat the aluminum because, as you know, aluminum likes to expand a lot when it's heated, and this prevents uh, the construction from shifting around while welding. And then I basically continued on doing like bigger and bigger welds while going around the frame. Yes, one of the plastic pieces from the clamp was uh, melted onto the aluminum, but it uh, came off really easily when it cooled down. After I finished welding, I measured it again with the tape and it turned out that all of the dimensions were exactly the same as before welding it. And here I burned a little hole in the ground. I have to say that this 3D printed template is uh, really, really good. I absolutely recommend it over marking your holes with like a ruler and pencil. Um, it saves a lot of time and uh, if you can absolutely 3D print your template. Here I'm finishing the slot for the belt with the crappiest jigsaw ever made. Scrub, scrub, scrub. And here is the finished X gauntry. They don't sell linear rails that are as long as I needed them to be, so I had to use two different sizes and combine them together. So for some reason, even though I bought them from the same seller, they're different. So now the carriage can't go smoothly between the rails, which is a problem, so I would recommend buying two of the same lengths of rails and combining them in the middle, that way it's more likely that they would be the same. And here I've made a special drill bit that creates indentations in the aluminum. The plan is to use linear rails as templates for drilling and then I would use the smaller drill bit size to drill the actual holes. This is how the indentations look. And now I'm making two millimeter holes that I'm gonna later enlarge to 2.5 millimeters for the M3 tabs. I mounted the tab in this swivel extension because I'm not crazy enough to manually tap all of those holes. Thank you. 
here I put together the X country for the test drive. It seems to be working correctly. Now it's time to drill and tap all of the holes for the Y gantry, uh, but I found some issue with the linear rails, they're all in the shape of banana, so on the other side I decided to use the standard method of just making a point with a ruler and then drilling and tapping them. So here is an issue, I start from the X country being positioned exactly at the end of the linear rays and when I push it to the other side only one of the cards reached the end of the linear rail while the other one is behind f about 5 millimeters, which basically means that each side of the country is traveling different distances but luckily I was able to fix it with this rubber mallet I just took the bend, the banana bend out of the linear rails and it kind of fixed the problem I later had to just do a little bit more straightening because you know I thought that the linear rails are gonna fix everything because they are expensive but they come with their own problems and it's really hard to align them Okay, now that all of the metal stuff is done, it's time to assemble 3D printed par plastic parts. So yeah, to do that, I'm gonna need some mounting holes for screws, so I've made this beautiful template to drill out those holes, which works really great. I'm gonna use brand new M6 Allen screws for my set. Here, as you can see, I've got quite a bit of problems uh, with the spacing. This part could have used only two screws, but luckily I need to put it together only once, right? Those 3D printed parts for the Z carriage turned out to be too bendy, so I'm gonna have to replace them with some uh, metal plates. For some reason those carriages aren't smooth when moving vertically, so I tried to oil them but it didn't help. And yeah, everything seems to work really good, it's limiting the movement so that nothing falls out. I took some rods from the box of, of parts from inkjet printers and I cut them down to hold rollers in place. The part that was really hard to screw in has to be replaced because there is no space to fit in the roller. Mm, this is the new part, as you can see the roller falls right through. Some of the rods were too thick, so I had to sand them down so that I didn't have to use hammer to put them in place, which is not optimal with, with bearings. Here you can see me start a thread for the screws, so that this part would be a lot easier to mount in place this time. 
And I'm not going all the way because if screw forms its own thread in the plastic, the, this formed thread is gonna be much stronger than, than the pre-tapped one. And yes, I mounted it upside down, so now I have to unscrew it and screw it back in again, which is nice. <laughs> this is my box with parts from like large format laser printers, and I'm gonna reuse some of the stepper motors that I have. This is how it looks with everything mounted in place. I forgot to record putting in the limit switches, but that's just few screws. The only thing left to do now is uh, wiring some like electronics and belts and probably a million other things that I forgot about, but that's gonna come in future episodes.